Okay. So when, we, when we've talked about um, open and closed pipes so far and the vibrations within them, we've been looking at basically that. You know, column of air vibrating inside it. And that's true if you whack the top of that pipe with a flip-flop or if you blow into the top of that pipe, blow across the top of that pipe, that's what you set up. However, let's switch colors. We'll, we'll switch to a, a yellow for our copper pipe here. Oh, not much different. Um, if you take a hammer and you strike this pipe, if you take a hammer and you strike that pipe, what you are actually doing is creating a transverse wave in the pipe. Now, it's obviously not that exaggerated. It's very, very subtle. But you are not creating that same standing column of air within the pipe. You're creating a, a transverse vibration in the pipe. And so it looks something like, and obviously, again, very exaggerated, something like that. Doing. Okay? It's a whole different calculation. It's a whole different calculation. So if you look at your packets, so, so walking through just what you're going to do, you're going to be building a chime. You have to have a minimum of five notes. You can have more notes. There are a lot of sources online that do um, actually octave chimes where you do an entire octave of music. You can do that. Um, as far as under that first section where it says chimes may be open end or closed end. For right now I would recommend that you all do open end because I am still sort of paddling to get caught up with what I now understand was incorrect before and I'm not sure if these calculations work for closed pipes. So this is a learning process for me too. It's kind of exciting. I like this. Um, well, let me let me keep let me let me keep researching. Um, you have to use a top plate. That's obvious, and you've all seen wind chimes. You know that they have to hang from something. You have to have a striker, and you have to have a wind catcher because there has to be some way for the striker to move. When you're doing your chime design, and this hasn't changed, um, some of the things you want to think about are the mass of the wind catcher and the mass of the striker. If you have a paper plate attached to a steel disc. The paper plate is going to swing wildly and the steel disc is not going to move at all. You know, if your paper plate's your wind catcher. If you have a circular saw blade for a wind catcher, it's going to take a pretty high wind to get that thing moving. So you want to hit the right balance. Um, a lot of people have used pieces of wood, actually, um, and, you know, a, a nice square of wood. You can do a lot of things with wood because you can paint it. And so you can, if you're doing a theme chime, if you're going for artistic or, or theme chime stuff, um, there are a lot of options there. So that's the easy part, the, the sort of artistic and design part. And, and thinking about mass of striker and mass of catcher, that's sort of something you'll just play with. <clears throat> there are no real calculations for that. <laughs> that second section. So show all calculations for notes each chime should produce. So... If we go to the back page, uh, I've got a, a list of resources on in your packet, and the users.df.uba.arsgill is one that I've used a lot. That is actually a his his paper, and he teach, he's somebody who teaches um, physics at the high school and college level. And his paper is actually a discussion of constructing a copper pipe xylophone. But he references in there that the same exact calculation, at one point he even says, you know, these same calculations could be used, and if, if I was constructing a xylophone, this is the point at which, or if I was constructing a chime instead of a xylophone, this is the point at which I would um, drill and suspend them. Versus, but instead, I am mounting them on a flat surface. So his, his stuff is all adaptable for either. Um, the calculations below, the formula below, pretty much all comes from his work, as you'll see from the footnote on the bottom of that. So for a struck pipe, rather than our, our simple old Fn equals um, n times v over 2L, that doesn't work. So, <laughs> f sub n is actually equal to, oh, you, you're just going to love this, pi 
times the velocity of the sound in that material times k, which is a constant for a given material that you can calculate, m squared, ugh, and still I'm not completely 100% clear on what m is, so um, same, like, 8 l squared. Yes, for if, if you have all... Yeah, if you if you get one section, one type of pipe, and you cut it up, K is a constant number for you. So basically, V and K are going to be constants, and M is going to be a constant for you. So the only thing that's going to change is your frequency. Now, to rearrange this to solve for L, which of course is what we have to do, um, let's see, L equals the square root of pi v k m squared over 8 frequency. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's, that's your, your rearrangement. Um, yes. It's not that bad. Because, again, a lot of these are going to be constants for you, so um, v and k once you figure out V and K for your material, those are not going to change. And actually, if you look at your table, V is a given. So most of you will probably end up using copper, and that's 3,700 meters per second. Um, oh, and you know what? In table one, I, I forgot this. Um, table one in your packet, those speeds are all in meters per second. Those velocities are all in meters per second. And somehow I left that off of there, so that's my fault. Um, if you're using aluminum, you know, 5,150 meters per second, brass, copper, um, steel. So now there's no, there's no discussion there of whether steel, like galvanized steel conduit, would be different than stainless steel. So as far as we're concerned, we're going to use the same value for steel and assume that it's the same. Honestly, there probably is a difference. But since we're not engineering this to, you know, like protect people's lives or something or build a rocket ship to Mars, I think we can probably get away with that amount of fudging. Um, if you're okay with it, unless you want me to go out and do further research and get you another number. You're all okay with that? Okay. Um, yeah, so, so V is given to you. K, and, and I'll show you a little bit later. I've actually got a, a little bit of a cheater for K. So we'll, we'll practice some K calculations with various pipe that we have here, but then I'll, I'll show you the, the cheater trick for K. Um, L is the length of your pipe. So that's, that's pretty easy, and frequency is, of course, the frequency of the note you want. You've got the piano keyboard there with the frequencies for all your notes. Um, you can pick out, and I've, I've got a number of musicians here. I've got Devin today and Caleb and Miles. And who are my other musicians? Okay, Hannah plays piano. So um, if you are completely unfamiliar with music other than, like, I've heard it, you may want to kind of tag team with a musician. And some of, the, some of the really nice things that we've heard, and of course they were calculating it wrong, but um, in the past people have very often, you know, picked a chord out of a song or... Um, picked, you know, the first five notes of my favorite song. You can go online and find sheet music, or you can just kind of dork around. There are several online keyboards. You can pull those up on the computers, um, play with play with the keyboard until you find five notes you like, or six, or eight, or whatever, and pick some notes today. So by the end of today, you should have notes picked, and you should, you can actually probably have all your calculations done. We'll talk a little bit more about the calculations probably tomorrow, but right now let's practice some K calculations. Okay, so we're going to use the calipers. We're going to practice taking some measurements on copper pipe for inside and outside. We have three sets of calipers, so the thing that we're going to do today, I'll do a demo measurement and then I'll have all of you practice with a partner taking measurements and doing a K calculation. Pretty, pretty standard. All right, so we've got our inner and outer dimension diameter measurements using our calipers. So K is equal to 0.5 times the square root of inner D squared plus outer D squared. It says radius. Oh, it is radius, not diameter. I'm sorry. 
Okay, so divided by 2. How's that? Better? Okay, so 0.5 times um, 1.39 centimeters divided by 2 quantity squared plus 1.65 centimeters divided by 2 squared. Okay, let's get our K value. Okay, so we've gotten our K value for this particular piece of steel pipe. Once you get your K value, that's it. You don't ever have to do that calculation again because you're using the same pipe. So you'll do one set of measurements on your diameters and then plug it all in, get a K value, and just note that on your calculations sheet. Um, so that's not so terrible. And I'll help you all get diameter measurements because the calipers are kind of tricky to use. We do have a digital caliper, which we can, we can play around with. And, and try and see how accurate we are. Questions? What are the units? Centimeters and um, you'll need, actually, you will need in the final analysis to convert it into meters because everything else will be in meters. So you will need to convert it into meters. And put it into equation. When you put it into your final equation, yeah. Other questions? Question. So the question is how, how do you solve for your various harmonics? Because in um, these, these are, as I'm informed by reading several sources, these are waves which do not conform to the sinusoidal, sinusoidal wave pattern. And they don't conform clearly and, and cleanly to all the stuff we've done before, which is why the calculations we've done before don't really work. Um, the harmonics are not just you know, F2 equal to 2 times F1. That works on a string, that works on a slapped pipe, or a pipe organ doesn't work here with a struck pipe. Um, you're going to figure each of your pipe lengths based on your fundamental, which is the note you want. So I'll let you pick out your notes today, figure out your lengths, start figuring out your lengths today, um, if you know what kind of pipe you're going to get. And I do, on my little cheater sheet, um, there are actually some diameter measurements for some various standard kinds of pipe, and we'll see how close those come. But you can use some of the scrap pipe we've got here you know, if you know that you're going to go out and buy conduit, we have plenty of conduit. You can measure the diameters and get your K values and figure out your lengths. Um, if you're going to use, you know, copper pipe about like this, you know, half inch copper pipe, you can take those measurements, get a sense of what your K values will be, plug that stuff in, and and get an idea of how long your your pipes are going to be, how much pipe you're going to need overall. Again. Um, strongly encourage the um, exploitation, exploration, usage of barns full of, sheds full of stuff. Um, you know, don't, don't pay for stuff if you don't have to. If there's a pile of old scrap picked conduit in the barn, go raid it. We have pipe cutters here that will handle that easily. So, questions? Yeah. So the, fun, the, the harmonics, the higher harmonics, we'll talk about tomorrow. I want to get you through the first set of calculations today, and then we'll go into what the first, the, the slight differences are there. Questions? Other questions? Do we have a due date? Ah, do we have a due date? That's a fabulous question. Right now I'm thinking a week from tomorrow. Whoa. Okay, so chimes are due Tuesday, April 22nd. You'll have today to work, what's left of it, half of tomorrow, all of Friday. Your test will be Tuesday, the, which is the 15th. Test is Tuesday, April 15th. Okay, questions, comments, concerns?